fantasy self. This is a really good topic. I've spoken about it before with my friends Christina and Sina over on our Sustain This podcast. And the fantasy self is a very real thing. It is when we shop for a lifestyle, a person, a body that might not be ours. It is perhaps in the future, something maybe that doesn't even apply to us at all. And often thinking of our fantasy selves and shopping for our fantasy selves leads to wasteful purchases that we don't ever end up using. The difference between a fantasy self and aspirational dressing, in my opinion, is that when you dress or have a style goal that is rooted in aspiration, this is still based in reality. We know what is possible for our future. We know what we want our future to look like because yes, there is a true power to dressing for the job you want or dressing for the life you want. But I think we really need to figure out what the root of that is. So if the root of aspirational dressing is self-love and wanting us to build and create a better life for ourselves and show ourselves some love, then I believe that's aspirational dressing. I believe the fantasy self and shopping for our fantasy selves is actually rooted in a place of ego and fear and lack. I think the fantasy self perhaps comes from a place of not wanting to accept ourselves or our current reality or our current lifestyle style needs. And while this might be getting really, really deep, don't worry, I'm not going to go any deeper than that. I do think there are ways that we can put our fantasy self aside. So today I'm going to share some tips on how to dress for the awesome person that you are while still being pretty rooted in reality and self-love. I'm going to do this today with help from my wonderful friends over at Nordgreen, a Danish watch company. I'm going to tell you shortly why Nordgreen is one of my favorite watch companies and why I've been working with them for the past six years in just a few. But for now, let's get into these tips. My first tip is to do a lifestyle and a closet audit. I've talked about closet audits before. There are so many different methods to do one, but for now, essentially going through your closet entails going through all of the items in your closet and making sure that they actually align with your current lifestyle. An easy way to do this is to simply categorize your clothes into the different aspects of your your day, whether it's work, leisure, weekend, and then have a seat and actually look at your day-to-day -day life and figure out your lifestyle. A really nice visual way to do this is to create a little pie chart if you like. So if you know how many items you have in your wardrobe, or if you're using an app, for example, like my index or open wardrobe, you could count how many items or figure out how many items you have in each of these categories. And then once you've figured out, say, what percentage of your day, week and month are taken up by certain activities, you can compare these two little pie graphs and see if they actually line up. A big part of the closet audit process is actually taking a wide angle snapshot, let's say, of your life, of who you are, and also how you want to move through life. I also think a big part of this is digging into self-acceptance a little bit. I think every closet audit does have a little bit of like self-love and self-care involved because it takes time. Definitely give yourself about three to four hours to do a closet audit or even just one hour a week if you can, depending on your own time. But giving yourself that chance to reflect and look inside your own wardrobe for clues as to who you are, what you like to do, how you like to spend your time, and even perhaps if you want to go a little bit deeper, what your values are. Are the majority of your clothes secondhand? Are they natural fibers? Did you purchase them at local boutique? or from women or BIPOC owned businesses, you can really tell a lot about yourself through looking at your closet. And also it's a pretty solid indicator too, based on the clothes that actually fit and that you feel really good in as well. Definitely go through your closet audit and think very hard before you declutter any of those sort of fantasy self pieces. I love this next one. And that is to pause before and after each purchase. Giving ourselves space around adding an item to our closet does a few things. The pause before a purchase allows us to really reflect on whether this is a purchase that aligns with our lifestyle, or it also allows us to assess 
Whether this is coming from a place of love or is this coming from a place of lack? When we're purchasing a piece, do we know it's going to move us in the style direction we want to go? Is it actually going to be used? Is it going to help us move through our day and serve ourselves and our families and our communities with ease in an easier way? Is it going to help us express ourselves with intention? To figure out if you're shopping from a place of lack or from that mindset of a fantasy self, sometimes I ask myself, how am I feeling? Why do I want to buy this purchase? Is it because I'm feeling lonely or sad or because I'm missing someone or I feel like I deserve a treat? Some of those can also be valid. There is no judgment. We are human, but it is kind of nice to give yourself a little bit of like a litmus test before you make a purchase. And this can really help you start making purchases with intention that actually align with a life that you want to be living and a style that you want to be exuding. The reason why a pause after a purchase, this is my favorite, and it's actually so much fun, is that it actually gives you time to style the purchase with the clothes you already have. It actually gives you time to play with this new piece and see how much you can enjoy it and see how many different ways you can style it. I know we often talk about the dopamine rush that comes with shopping and retail therapy and then it gives you like a down after once you've received the item, I think if we can hang on to that joy and really appreciate the piece, we're really trying to integrate it with our closet and what we already have. And that can be so much fun because it can also jumpstart that habit so that we can continue to play around with this piece over years and years. So when you give yourself space around a purchase, it allows you to build a closet more slowly and with more intention. And this leads me to my next point, which is figure out your signature piece or a signature look or a signature something around style. All of our favorite style icons, if we look at them closely, typically they've got some sort of signature. If you think of Emmanuel Alt with her fitted blazers, we think of Jane Birkin with her basket bag, Iris Apfel with her bottleneck glasses, Kevin Reufeld just wears black all the time. There is power in developing a signature style or wearing similar things or wearing your clothes in a similar way every day. Even if your body or your style or your life is changing or you find yourself just getting carried away in the everyday and you're not really maybe thinking that much about what you're wearing, finding a staple item or a staple style can help you remain grounded when things are feeling a little wild. And this can keep you grounded in your authentic style, but also just helps you reconnect with yourself. Examples of this could be a pair of sunglasses, perhaps it's heirloom jewelry. I'm often wearing my two known as vintage rings. It could be a watch. Which brings me to today's amazing sponsor, Nordgreen. Thank you, Nordgreen. If you've never heard of them, Nordgreen is a Danish watch company with a really great slow fashion philosophy that is proven by their quality craftsmanship, their longevity of product offerings, and their timeless design. The reason why I love partnering with Nordgreen and why I have been for so long and why I like sharing them as a slow fashion resource is because they maintain an aesthetic and a style and design that is very true to themselves and is evergreen. The best example of this is my very first Nord Green watch. I received the native with the brown leather strap and the white face and it is still on their website and available six years later. Nord Green has always made solid commitments through their giving back program and now they're making additional steps through traceability in their supply chain and their reduction in plastic use. I appreciate their transparency that they share as they get closer to reaching these goals every year. If you are looking to add a watch to your signature style or just to your wish list down the road, of course, there is never any pressure to shop now, but I do love my Nord Green watches, especially if you've been around here for a while. I do have a discount code for you, which I will leave in the description box below. As always, I hope my sponsored content resonates with you, your style, and and your values, and I so appreciate your support. My next tip revolves more around shopping as a habit. I think it's so easy for us to kind of fall into the trap of shopping 
through, you know, scrolling when we're bored or even just, you know, scrolling on our feeds. And of course we get bombarded by ads or, you know, shopping on the weekend or as an activity when we're bored. And as we do this, shopping becomes unintentional and a little bit mindless. And that's where the fantasy self can kind of creep in and take over because we don't have a plan. I think in order to still get that kind of, you know, dopamine rush that we normally get from making a purchase, is it possible for us to spend that time going through our closets instead and trying to shop our closet instead? So maybe this looks like heading over to a wardrobe app that you can like play around and do some like old school like fashion collages, anything that sets off that creative muscle and that allows you to come up with something new. Maybe it's not groundbreaking. Maybe all you're doing is pairing two different items in your closet together, or maybe you're just cleaning out a certain section of your closet and you're discovering some old pieces that way. As long as it's style or closet related, maybe try shifting those habits so that you still feel that sense of reward and you're still taking that time to show yourself and your style a little bit of love, but just in a different way that might require a bit more intention. My final tip is to look for items with emotional durability. This is a really interesting term coined by a professor at Carnegie Mellon University. University. Jonathan Chapman describes emotional durability as identifying what gives an item value instead of just what makes an item desirable. And this can almost feel a little bit like splitting hairs. It's still a little bit mind blowing. We actually did a podcast episode on this as well, which I will link for you down below because it's fascinating. But I think this is really important to start distinguish whether we value a piece or whether we simply desire it. When we look at why or how we will value a garment in our closet, it really does shift the perspective versus whether we just want it just to want it, to be on trend, to be cool. When you actually see the value in an item and can identify it, that gives that garment emotional durability. So for example, ways that you can identify emotional durability in a garment could be by imagining how it fits into your current daily life. Does it add value? Does it help you function better? Does it help you complete your work tasks? That's like at the absolute basic level. But then there's also, you know, how would this look after several years of wear? How would this look if maybe in a few years I'm a bit of a different person? Can I still picture myself wearing this? Do the design features, does the fabric, does its place of origin, do those things align with me and my personal values? Those are all good questions to assess the emotion emotional durability. Sina on our podcast episode said she will often try and picture an item when it's, you know, maybe a bit scuffed or dirty or in the wash and will she still love it? And I thought that was a really good question to ask ourselves as well. So that is what I have for you today. Let me know what you thought of those ideas in the comments below. Thank you again to Nordgreen for sponsoring today's video. Don't forget I have that discount code for you in the description box below as well if you're interested. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you you found this video helpful give it a thumbs up if you did or even if you just learned something new hit subscribe if you haven't already and i will be back with another slow fashion video have a great rest of your day night wherever you're at ciao